can do what I like. I'm a free spirit. <laughs> as long as you keep your pants on. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 55 of the number one crude mistakes podcast with Glenn from another number blah 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 blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's the first time you've messed up I think KJ I it? think so yeah are, are, are you okay with that or should I say it again <laughs> It makes me feel better about myself <laughs> That does <laughs> Leave it in and let's go <laughs> yeah. Glenn from number one projects because he thinks he's number one uh, KJ from Crude Efficient and Hovar from Behind the Mistakes. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So, so, based on the comment for Glenn there, so you think you're efficient, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> and you think you're behind. <laughs> Always behind. <laughs> You're the one who's most ahead of all of us in every sense, I think. Yeah, more often than ever, I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> By the time I catch up, it's a shit show. <laughs> ah, that's that's a bad one. And just for the record, I don't think I'm number one. That's covered in episode 20. It's just because I live at number one. <laughs> yeah, but you have to know you and actually listen to the podcast to know that. Everyone else just thinks that you're the best. Yeah. I don't think everybody else thinks that at all, KJ. <laughs> or everyone else thinks so. that you think you think <laughs> that you're. So if right. I send a letter to Glenn at number one Lincolnshire, it's gonna get there. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. yeah. I'm gonna yeah. try that. <laughs> number one Glenn. First time <laughs> in Lincolnshire. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what way you count on the street, because it's only one house. <laughs> Just. This is quite underpopulated in Lincolnshire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, enough uh, rambling. So, guys, how's your week been? Great. I'm on holiday. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, it's Norwegian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> true, true that, true that. Well, uh, it's our first year when we have to align to the school schedule. I mean, at least in... Ooh, 25 plus years. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the oldest kid is uh, on school holiday this week, and I just decided, screw it. I want a holiday too. So <laughs> that's uh, what's happening this week. So I'm, I'm running a very small private kindergarten uh, school substitute thing, whatever they're called in English. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm not on the holiday, but I've had the last two days off too. Rain. Nice. All the rain last two days, so uh, no work for Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> and you're so sad about it. <laughs> I am a little bit sad because the ongoing saga of the big lump of chestnuts still going on in the um, in the workshop, and it's you fill it with epoxy, and then you wait 24 hours, and you get to sand it for an hour, and then you put some more epoxy in it, <laughs> wait 24 hours. So it's not really filled my days, to be fair. But I mean, doesn't do you have to wait 24 hours? Then you're not using enough hardener. You should just put more hardener <laughs> in. I mean, uh, that's why I use uh, two-component filler or whatever. It's like, uh, just mix it together, <laughs> slap it on in a hurry, and then... Uh, you sand after 10 minutes. No, I don't think that's going to work, Havard. I but did I try sanding it. it. I did try sanding it a little earlier today and that didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought you were going to be free of that. Just, it sounded like just after a couple of days after the last recording. No, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I said a week or two, to be honest with you. And okay, I, maybe I heard a day or two. Yeah, so yeah. I, but I mean, I, what, where do you thinking? sand it? Don't you, you just put it through the thicknesser, don't you? <laughs> That'd be a hell of a thicknesser. <laughs> a reason to buy one. Yeah, a commercial one. Yeah, there it's, uh, it's it's over six hundred mil wide at the moment. The slab, so yeah, oh. it ain't going through my little uh, my little thicknesser. 
just cut it up on the table so they won't notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, slice it up and then run it through and glue it back yeah. together again. A few biscuit joints. Yeah. <laughs> right is right, won't it? Hey, why did we not have this conversation earlier? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and you also mounted your instruments on the wall. I did that for you. Yeah, thank you. Just it's... for you, KJ. It's uh, it's uh, such a better, such a better. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks better behind you. Yeah, I um, yeah, I mounted the instruments. I had a visit to my uh, mum's on um, Sunday morning, and uh, pruned a tree for her, and then came back with all manner of things as you do when you visit your mum. So um, I came back with a pair of curtains, a three in one, <laughs> a three in one uh, <laughs> hedge trimmer, extendable hedge trimmer. And um, a couple of bottles of wine. So I, th I thought the cur I'll put the curtains in here, which I have done just down the side of me. They're the bluest of blue curtains in the world. And then um, I thought, while I'm in here, I'll put the instruments up for KJ. So I've just drilled some holes in the wall, a few dowels in there, stuck them up for you. <laughs> just to make you happy, mate. Yeah. <laughs> to stop me good... nagging. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show that you listen to the, to the edit. <laughs> it's almost... <laughs> It's almost we... worth going out of the room for just to see what you guys come up with. It's really amusing, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean that that's a good loot you got there. I mean, I I, I would visit your mom for an hour or two if I could uh, come <laughs> home with a three-in-one hedge trimmer and. Uh... I'm going to say this once: you stay away from my mother. <laughs> <laughs> So that's where it draws the line. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> you really know it. <laughs> so what are you doing with your week off then, Havar? Uh, what am I doing? Well, it's it was a bad forecast, but it has really turned around. So it's been like sunny days. So I tried to spend it as much outside as possible uh, and uh, one of my wife's aunts uh, just uh, volunteered to take the youngest one so she's been at a sleepover for two nights and then I went to get her today and then the oldest one wanted to be away on a sleepover so I'm like, okay she can stay so uh, I'm just been wrestling one kid this week uh, at any given time which is nice and of course when you get the competitiveness out of the picture by having them present in the same room at the same time um, you can really do stuff uh, more deliberately so uh, we've been outside building a cat house so we have been practicing uh, driving in nails with a hammer hitting our thumbs and then learning how to use a plier to keep the nail <laughs> while you're getting it seated and uh, yeah so it's been a really good uh, father-daughter week so far nice and of course, when they, when they are a bit self-sufficient, I'm, I'm working behind the scenes, setting things up, just positioning everything. So whenever the mom comes home and they run off like, mom, 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 then I have like, all right, I got half an hour, let's get welding. So <laughs> <laughs> I just positioned all the tools to getting ready for that. So yeah, I've been uh, doing some of my own projects as well, which has been nice. And you got a video out? Yeah, got one out, got one ready to go, actually. I'm not sure when I want to drop it yet or if I'm going to space it out. So, um, yeah, okay, might give it a week. I mean, that, <laughs> that depends when the third part in the saga com comes out. Yeah, that, that's the thing, though, because if I just dropped it the second day, people would expect the third one and the fourth one. And now <laughs> I'm waiting on parts from China. So that might take a couple of weeks. So I thought if I now space them out a week in between, that would be nice. And I, I, I can't fathom why haven't I thought of this before? Because I do have 30, 40, 50 minute long videos that I could easily chop into. <laughs> <laughs> three or four videos just just make them part one two and three <laughs> yeah just go back and re-release them yeah <laughs> for the patrons only name, would, would people even <laughs> notice <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, sorry 
carry on. No, nope, carry on. You I was going to say, I, well, I did actually re- re-release a video. I think I have spoken about it before, but I built the hallway table, released the video, and then a couple of people said to me, I wish you'd put some captions or said what you were actually doing because I didn't understand what you were doing at the time. So I re-released the same video and just put some captions on there, so <laughs> telling people what I was doing, and it got a similar amount of views to the first time around. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting uh, thing to try out, just to release the same video over and over again. Yeah, just make <laughs> subtle changes. <laughs> I always wondered how the algorithms work with that, because sometimes you, fuck, I did a, I did a mistake, so you delete the video and you re-upload it. And, I mean, small changes, uh, I mean, in the size and in the length of the video, I mean, it's does the system just see it as a completely different file or is it smart enough to just, all right, this is the same as the one he uploaded last, but with some minor tweaks? Because it would be interesting to upload a movie and then you know, this didn't go as well. And then after a week, just delete it and re-upload it. <laughs> just see yeah. if that helps. <laughs> we need an old veteran of YouTube who got fed up with it, don't we, to try this out just to re-release all the old, all the old ones just to see what happens. Yeah, they just space them out very accurately, and then just yeah. <laughs> yeah didn't mm. uh, Matthias Vandel or what's his uh, Wood Gears the guy? He re-released some old videos that he thought uh, the edit was too slow, so it, he he re-edited and uploaded them again. But I mean, they were like ten years old or something like that. Those videos. Oh, so. oh wow! <laughs> that got me thinking though. What if you just make a new channel and then you just upload all the same videos just of course in two years behind so i just make a new one and call it uh behind behind the mistakes and then i just release my first video again not doing anything other than uploading it and just see does it hit the same sweet spot or <laughs> does it just tank all the way i think one of, one of the channels that got shut down won't it i don't think you're allowed to download and release other people's videos without changing them are you but it's my own videos yeah i know but youtube doesn't know that does it <laughs> they, i mean it's the same i mean they're connected would, to the same would account have, so would it not have to be a, a different account and i mean I, it won't be a problem if Howard doesn't file a complaint against himself <laughs> <laughs> which would be interesting i guess you could make a whole video on that <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there's uh, a copycat. No, I'm fuck, not. Yeah. Yes, take you are. <laughs> I'm take yourself sure. to court. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure five minutes in, Glenn is going, report. I've seen this video from this other guy previously. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, controversy like that, that's the the thing on, on YouTube nowadays. I think yeah, I hear it from all sides, it feels like. Just people suing each other and... <laughs> controversy and ah yeah. but you need you, a lot you, of drama nowadays you commented on a thumbnail though that i, I should picture myself on the um, the atv as well with some more hipper newer clothes and i could do that i can make a second channel where i just wear a different colored shirt and i wear my caps <laughs> the other way around and then i could be like uh, my own uh, super villain so whatever i do <laughs> on one channel i have to do on the other and just <laughs> oh, that was totally bullshit. I, I, I saw him not using glue on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Wario to your Mario. <laughs> yeah. You have to figure out who's the, who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but going back to your, your video, I thought it was... Uh, it felt really nice and it felt kind of weird when it ended. I mean, I, I'm so used to you doing like 50-minute videos with you just going along or talking about what you're doing and then it just it just stopped that yeah. felt, it felt uh, weird and, and new and fresh I, I was really on the fence because yes i was rambling on but you always are yeah but here it was a lot of repetitive work and cutting the chassis and fitting it and for those of you who don't know i'm uh, fitting uh basically a kid's petrol powered atv inside a toy like a pedal tractor or, um, or whatever they're called 
uh, and yeah, cutting plastic with an angle grinder uh, and just trying to make it fit. It, it wasn't very interesting video, so I, I quickly realized this need to be a build montage, and then uh, yeah, I found some places where we, it would be natural to cut the video off and then do the next segment and I also had to uh, go to bed at some point and then continue the next day so if I just cut it off at that what I did that day it matched up and I don't have to think as much on like pretending it's the same day the second day <laughs> but <laughs> I mean that's really a reasonable place yeah. to cut it I'm but calling it... bullshit <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I'm calling bullshit. I think you, uh, your subscribers have been going up, and you're getting so close to four thousand now. You were just desperate to get some content out. Yeah, I, thought, I'm milking it. <laughs> you thought, fuck it, I need to just get a video out as soon as possible. And so you did what you did, and uh, got that first video out and called it part one. It is, and it worked. <laughs> well, I mean, it worked in the sense of. I've actually drawn a couple of people from TikTok uh, who actually commented on a video that, oh, this was a refreshingly slow pace, <laughs> according to TikTok. So, um, isn't everything? <laughs> yeah, isn't everything. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been good, but I'm also realizing that, I mean, putting petrol-powered engines into anything seems to get the crowd going. So, I mean, if... Uh, if you make a petrol powered strum stick, that should be the next one to get you to a thousand. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Ooh, maybe I will. <laughs> hmm, how to do that? But to be fair, it's it's been a blast so far. Um, I mean, the 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 build quality of the ATV is so poorly uh, and easy and simple that. It's really easy to to mangle and modify to get the chassis fitting, and the, the the sizes also fit. I mean, when the axle distance and the width were relatively the same, I just had to cut away the the, the pieces enough to just shoehorn the chassis over <laughs> it, and I can leave everything almost in place. Um, what I'm planning to do tomorrow is I'm gonna I'm gonna tilt the the steering column uh, a few degrees backwards and how much cutting and modifying is that going to be but i think the the bottom plate that holds the steering column in place is so thin and flimsy so i'm thinking if i just cut the welds on top and i just bend it backwards it's, it's just <laughs> going to flex that plate enough and then i just weld the the upper fastening back in and it should be good to go so i mean yay for bad build quality <laughs> good enough build quality good enough build quality yeah i was looking at that project and thinking that the steering thing is going to be the hardest thing to modify i thought yeah getting it in the right position but you seem pretty confident yeah, my my brother-in-law was a bit disappointed that I did not move the engine uh, further forward where the engine's supposed to be. But I mean, <laughs> there is all the complicated uh, steering yeah. geometries. So I don't want to cut anything, so I'm staying away of the steering geometry in the front and also the rear spring. So I have cut and bent some pipes to get the seat as low as possible, but I can't get it any lower without starting to uh, moving the, the rear spring and so on. But then I'm going to have to modify something else and then something else. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be at that height now, and I just have to modify and make the, the centerpiece in between. Cool. Yeah, looking forward to part two. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> KJ, you got a video out? I did, finally. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's been uh, in the works for a while now. Uh, yeah, that one as well could have been several episodes because there, it was basically a lot of small snippets, wasn't it? Yes, it was very much. Uh, uh, it felt like a best of <laughs> video, more or less. <laughs> or yeah, it was a lot of clips filmed in very different times of the year and. And I mean, the only thing holding it together was uh, me doing that kind of newscast thingy, presenting yeah. them. 
and trying as best as I could to transition into the power knife uh, video, which I filmed beforehand. Uh, so I'm more or less <laughs> dressed in the same clothes and try to put the camera and <laughs> ruffle in the same. Uh, but if you look closely, you can see that my hair uh, go grows uh, shorter uh, when we transition into the, <laughs> the power knife video, because that was filmed uh, like a couple of weeks beforehand. It seemed like you enjoyed the power knife video part a bit more than the rest. You really you focused on yes. that a lot more. It was a yeah. lot cooler. It was a lot cooler though, to be fair. Yeah, it was more fun. I mean, the yeah. rest of it was more or less the the theme around it, and and yeah, and living up to my mistakes and actually being honest with all yeah. the crap that <laughs> happens behind the scenes, so to say. But it is a nice way to showcase old videos. I mean. If you once a year do like uh, fixing everything I did not fix, then you get uh, a chance to revisit and show like small teasers from uh, previous videos. Yeah, yeah. You could just do a super cut thing and just put your videos together with no editing, couldn't you as well? Yep. That's, like yeah, like that's, James. That's, <laughs> that super cut thing that feels so last year. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that boat <laughs> has left the station. No, that's what, not what you say, but yeah. <laughs> I'm really, uh, I'm really disappointed that the uh, super short thing didn't take off KJ. I thought that was a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, that w it would have been nice, but no, that fell flat on its face. So we're not talking about that. But I thought it was kind of fun to see that uh, uh, Dave Pesciuto of Make Something released a, a video titled Fixing My Worst Design just after mine. <laughs> Oh. So, so I, I felt like yeah, I started a trend of fixing things. Yeah. You always get those yeah. copycat YouTubers, don't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so fixing is the is the thing to do at the moment. I also got um, on Sunday. I got a, another little project handed to me. A neighbour from up the road uh, rang me <laughs> or sent me a message and said. I'm popping down. He said, I, th I think I've got a new project you'll be interested in. And there's no, can I come down? It's I'm coming down. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm there thinking, oh God, what's he bringing me this time? <laughs> but actually it was quite an interesting little project. It was a, um, a gear knob off a, uh, off a nice classic car of his father's that um, he needed fixing. So it's from a 1977 mm. Lotus Eclat Sprint. And the, uh, the knob had just, cracked and split and you know was basically ready for the bin and it was a case mm. of here can you do anything with this and also while you're at it can you make a little hole in the top for this uh, for my great granddad's lucky coin to be glued into the top so, okay. oh, so that was what that was yeah cool. yeah <laughs> i only found out this evening what that was so yeah i've had some fun today actually finishing that project off and i've handed it back over so that's good. I filled it full of resin because obviously I'm resin guy now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you call yourself knob doctor? Knob doctor, yeah. <laughs> knob yeah. spinner. <laughs> there's, there's been a few, been a few jokes talking around about the knobs. <laughs> I fixed your dad's knob for you. <laughs> Look at this knob; it's so shiny now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where's Glenn? He's in the workshop polishing his knob. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Going in the workshop, giving the neighbor's knob a spin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not polishing his own knob, that's true. <laughs> I was really pleased with how it came out, actually. it was. Um, so I, I got it and couldn't figure out. I knew I, I knew how to get resin into it because there's no way of forcing it back together. But then um, I figured out if I put a bolt on it, I could then chuck it up in the lathe. So once it was filled, I could sand it and then cut that hole dead centre for the coin in the top, and it all just worked out brilliantly. Mm, yeah. Gave it about ten coats of clear lacquer today, so it it's got that wet, shiny look about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're the local handyman. Yes, I get paid. <laughs> I get paid in whiskey as well, which is good. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, the family's not eating because I've not worked the past couple of days, but I've got whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> when you put it that way, it, hmm. <laughs> so you managed to get any making done, KJ? Very little. Um, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm. What was it? Uh, Jimmy Dresta called it avoidance prep. 
uh, <laughs> avoiding to start something, just uh, tidying up stuff. And uh, uh, I tore uh, tore the old uh, welding table apart just the other day uh, okay. to clear to clear out uh, space in the workshop to actually. So my uh, table saw actually can have somewhere to live that's not in the way. <laughs> because that feels like a good thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I feel I'm very much in the not to really know what to what to attack next. Because, yeah, all of the things I want to do will take a lot of planning and prep. And I don't feel like planning and prepping at the moment. I okay. just want to do something. Just want and to I tinker. don't. Yeah, yeah, I would like, uh, but I don't really have a, a good tinkering thing, or maybe I do. I don't know. And it's also that it's very much, it's very much, it's autumn here at the moment, so you feel like uh, uh, you have to do all the things that you have to do in the garden before winter comes. So then you get <laughs> get stressed over that as well. And yeah, I'm not getting any of those feelings about my garden. <laughs> <laughs> You said, said welding table. Have you made your new welding table yet? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. the the table itself is made, but uh, it doesn't really have a place to live yet, and all the metalworking tools don't have a place to live either because I just destroyed their home. So <laughs> right now they're just uh, piled up on on uh, one of the work tables. So now I have to figure out where to put them. Uh, and I think the, the the ones I use the most, that will be easy because they're going to be uh, very much uh, easily reached. But all the stuff that you sell them, I don't really have a plan for that. So maybe have a big tool chest or some toolbox or I, yeah, I don't know. I have to figure something out for those. Nice. <laughs> and I don't have a clue. Uh, <laughs> so I, I have to figure out some some solutions before I can go. Uh, finish it all up, and I, I feel like feels like it's been so long since I made the welding table, so I don't really remember where I left off the filming. So I think I have to more or less edit that, start editing that video more, and see where where it is I'm going to pick up in the right. next parts of filming because I don't know where I was. <laughs> Uh, there's something in my brain that makes it like I can't start editing something until I've finished it as well that processes for me I think yeah I, I like to do it that way as well but now I that would be going in blind too much yeah <laughs> <laughs> I would know where that would end but I, I'm waiting for you to finish that because I I am at that point that uh, I should also make some storage solutions for my welding table, but I, I keep drawing a blank. Um, I found one video on YouTube where there is a lot of ideas I want to nick, but I mean, he's so good at what he does. So uh, trying to mimic some of it is going to be crappy. So uh, <laughs> just procrastinating uh, and then hoping that uh, other good ideas will pop up. It would be nice in the bottom of a, a table stroke cart like that would be you know the old cantilevered uh, toolboxes where both sides just fold out yeah yeah something like that either side that you could pull out and so you could see the tools in you know three different layers would be really cool wouldn't it yeah but then you would need to i mean that would be rather big yeah uh, then you have to put it on wheels and then it's a big and cumbersome thing that's going to be in the way as well hey wait wait what Oh, mine is already on wheels. Cool. Is <laughs> 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 yours not on wheels, KJ? Uh, not the new one, no. It's no. Uh, it's a modular system. Oh, instead. okay. <laughs> Do you just flap? Can you flap pack it away then when it's not in use? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Got you. So that's. It's uh, it's supposed to take as as least space as possible. And I mean the 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 thing because the, what was bad with the old one was was big and heavy, and you couldn't really move it around because <laughs> it was overloaded with tools. Right. <laughs> as as things all, almost always gets. If I have space, then I will use it because I'm. I like to stack things in three D as well, 
to use every every square centimeter of space <laughs> and then it's too heavy to move <laughs> i've done that all my life and i can't seem to be able to stop so then i have to make myself small spaces instead so i can't overfill them <laughs> or when i overfill them they're not too heavy fair enough <laughs> i mean what tools do you need i mean one angle grinder that doesn't take very much space <laughs> one <laughs> <laughs> Peasant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need at least two, the same way that you need uh, uh, two drill drivers, one for a drill and one for the driver. Yeah. Uh, you need one uh, one cutting disc and one one flat disc or uh, <laughs> a, a sanding disc or whatever. And then you need one for the wire brush and, and a spare. Uh. <laughs> I have two angle grinders. One is for cutting stone, and the other one is for everything else. Mm. Because I don't like the stone dust getting into the switches and stuff. It knackers them up. <laughs> I I have three. Uh, I mean, one angle grinder for angle grinding purposes, and then I I have the very small one. It always have a cutting disc on it, but it's like just for cutting small brackets and uh, chopping screw heads off and so on and. Uh, as you Glenn, I have an old uh, cable powered one that uh, basically have a grinding wheel that I've used for stone the last 10 years. So it's <laughs> it was blue at some point, but it is gray. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of cleaning when you when you cut stone. And, yeah, I, I bought the new one because um, I thought the one that I used for cutting stone was knackered. So I bought the new one. I thought, oh, I've got this old one. I'll just take it apart and you know see if I can fix it. And it was literally just chock a block full of stone dust inside, which was stopping the switch from working. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaned it out, and oh. it was fine again. So. Yeah. It's really amazing how how resilient angle grinders are to to abuse, and how yeah. how easy it is to to clean them out and get them to work again. <laughs> because I mean, they are spinning at ridiculous speeds, and you have that. 90 degree angle on it as well and that that just keeps working and keeps spinning it's yeah, it's a bit <laughs> yeah, i don't really buy it theoretically <laughs> I, I mean if it wasn't for that gearbox i would understand it then it's just an electric motor is spinning at an insane speed and on an off switch uh, but uh yeah that uh yeah, that has yeah, those that gears. Gear at eleven thousand RPM. Yeah, that, that's impressive. <laughs> I, I think I paid for the one I use for the the concrete work. It's like it's the cheapest one you could find at some point. So I, I think I probably paid like twenty bucks for it. But it's been going for close to fifteen years, and I probably I properly abused it, and I, I just taped the wires. Uh, uh, every once in a while when I nick the power cord or cut it with something. So, yeah, but still going. So going back to the weekend for me on um, Saturday, I went to work for a starter, came home, got in the workshop, did a little bit of sanding. And then it's that time of year again where I uh, clean the bam, whether it needs it or not. Hmm. It did need it quite desperately. It's uh, <laughs> It has a white uh, roof as well as the sides now. Which is nice, as opposed to the <laughs> green green one. It was growing. <laughs> I mean, that's a, the gardener thing to have a, a van with <laughs> <That's it>. with <laughs> growing stuff on it. <laughs> and then, uh, yes, yeah, so I did all that, and then came in the house, decided to get a shower, and uh, got out the shower, and Michelle shouted, "There's water coming through the lights in the kitchen." <laughs> Oh, that's that's no, oh, that's a sentence you don't want to hear. And so uh, I was, I managed to get my pants on at this stage. I was ripping the bath panel off the bath to see where the water was coming from. Michelle came upstairs, burst out laughing because I'm there in my pants, obviously, <laughs> just trying to figure out where the leak was. And it was the all the drain pipe had just come disconnected from underneath the bath. Oh yes. Yeah. So the contents of the shower had. Uh, gone all on the kitchen floor through the lights shorted the power out and uh, it was a bit of a pain in the arse but it happened while all the DIY stores were open fortunately yeah. that sounds like a bad 
design if it can do that well i've only got myself to blame i plumbed it in but it was about 14 years ago so it's lasted all this time <laughs> i think you get a, a bit of an accumulation of soap and gunk around the bends and it's puts a little bit of extra pressure on when you get a force of water down there doesn't it yeah probably but uh, it was an easy fix took the lights off left them out to dry for a day and got a new couple of uh, joints and put them on and it's uh, all as good as gold now I our upstairs bathroom of course the the floor divider is concrete and I'm not sure if it was intended originally uh, but it's something that came about when they uh, decided to have a like an indoor garage and then of course the bathroom they, they, they just raised the floor when they mm. build it uh, probably because they, they didn't want to route all the the pipes and so on horizontally in the concrete floor uh, because they probably didn't think about it when they poured it um, so of course when uh, you go into our bathroom you take a step up um, and uh, I have not removed that kicker plate under the door and shone a, a light under there because I, I really don't want to know. It, it's not dripping water <laughs> anywhere, so I'm just assuming that everything is fine. But uh, yeah, I'm too afraid to open it up because if it's something dodgy on there, there we're facing a complete redo of the bathroom. <laughs> Sometimes you're just happier not knowing. Yeah. Sometimes you're just better off redoing the bathroom. <laughs> that too. But, ours, yeah. is, ours is definitely due. <laughs> maybe this year, maybe early next. Yeah. Ours were fixed a couple of years before we moved in. So that's yeah, somewhere 10, 15 years. So yeah, they'll the last a couple of years more when the kids are older. I keep telling myself, when the kids are older, then I have more time and more energy. But, yeah, that probably won't happen I, I remember, of course, it was an old video, video uh, living in this house when we took over. And after we bought it, I, I went to visit a couple of times just to drink coffee and chat with her. And uh, she had a lot to tell about the house and everything. And and she said that they recently redone the bathroom upstairs. And of course, that was in 2001. So <laughs> it wasn't yesterday, but to her it was. And when they redid it, they had a, a friend of the family doing it. So, and they obviously bought some tiles on sale or something very cheap because they have this salmon pink color that's, it's not from the early 2000s. That's a very early 90s look at best. So, <laughs> yeah, it might have been done in 2001, but it looks like it's 1975. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, 20 plus years. So, yeah, it is due. But luckily, uh, all the pipes go. Uh, we have the, the bathtub, the sink, and the toilet. They just meet up in the center of the room basically and then the pipes go straight down so any leak is going to end up in the hallway below and we haven't redone that and of course there is nothing there again get water damage so that's that's why i'm not too afraid but if we want to do anything it's going to be gutted because it's also a very small room so i mean we would have done a completely different layout just to make the space work much better but money. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to live in a construction site if you don't need to. No. Luckily, of course, we have a new bathroom downstairs. So, of course, we could block this off and just let them have at it. But, I mean, it is It's nice to have house, two bathrooms so... this way. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's the thing, though. I mean... When the, the two troublemakers get a bit older, two bathrooms is going to be more important. So, I mean, it would make sense to to redo the bathroom before that. But but we still have a few years. Yeah, when I first did our bathroom, when we moved in this house, we didn't have a, an extra toilet in the house. So that was a bit of a problem. 
<laughs> it, it makes fitting bathroom suites much quicker when you've got that pressure on. <laughs> <laughs> when you need to poo, then you're yeah. really quick on installing yeah. the toilet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, but you have a porta potty in your van, don't you? <laughs> True story. <laughs> in case of emergencies. <laughs> One of the hazards of being a gardener, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it is an issue though if you only have one bathroom, and then I mean, no matter who's sitting there, then someone is coming, like knocking on the door, twenty seconds. Oh, daddy, I need a wheel to go. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a, it is a blessing having an extra toilet in the house. I've got to, I've got to admit that the girls both like a bath, and when. When one of them goes in the bath, it's normally two to three hours worth of bathing. Yeah. And then they need a shower when they've had a bath. What's all that about? <laughs> well, that's, that depends uh... on what you put in your bath, I think. <laughs> Most of those uh, soaps and bath bombs and that sort of thing, it says clearly that you should really uh, hose this off because it's not good for your skin. So you <laughs> right. know how well it is to lay and soak in it, but yeah. <laughs> that that being said, one should have three bathrooms then, or at least three toilets, because you you want one for yourself or for the adults, and then you have one that the kids can use, and then one for guests. Or I mean, you can't compromise, so the one that the kids use is also for the guests. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a shocking realization because we just got an invoice for the last three months because we are being billed quarterly for our water usage and it's like this was a bit high I haven't used that much water this summer and i just started looking at the numbers and no that's not that's not too bad actually i mean they are stipulating a normal household to use more water than we actually do so that that's good but they jacked up the prices by uh, almost 20 percent okay. from I mean, from last year to this year, and then uh, it's just came to show on this uh, <laughs> invoice, and it's like, all right, they downplayed that because we didn't get any information on that. We probably written it in very small sentence on the hidden web page uh, down in the structure on the water department at uh, the municipality. But uh, yeah. I'm getting that uh, water bucket installed uh, relatively quick. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard people saying that in Norway, I mean, the lakes and the rivers are so clean, you can just drink from them. So can you not, yeah, just, nip yeah, down yeah. To, can you not just nip down to the local lake and get your water from there? Oh, I, I, I could. We have a lake that's very drinkable, just a few hundred meters away from our house. So I could get a, a pump and a, a tank and just go and fill it up. But I mean... I mean it's not very expensive yet, but it is annoying. But I can understand it as well because a lot of the plumbing in Norway is getting like a 60 year plus, And a lot of these companies and the municipalities haven't prioritized fixing them. And they are now feeling the brunt of that mistake because everything needs to be, be renewed. And they realized that cost a lot of money. <laughs> so, yeah. and of course, it's the customers who have to pay. So, 60 years old, that seems pretty new for England. <laughs> I yeah, think, I, I think I most was, of our charges are just fixing leak charges. <laughs> I, I was really amazed because when they put new pipes in our road, of course, we we connected to the new system as well and then all right let's change out the the 20 meters of old steel pipes between the high uh, house and the connection point and when they cut it up and i just lifted the parts out to throw them away i mean they showed next to no tear I'm, I'm pretty sure those could have stayed in for a hundred years extra so uh, yeah but still, it, it doesn't help when we need to connect to a new connection point, so I can't just release it into the ground. Or I could, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> but it, w water is one of those things that you really, you really miss when you don't have it. So I mean, it's worth, it's worth a, worth a lot to pay for it. I think. Yeah. But still, wa water is one thing. 
Um, but when it comes to power, I mean, I remember when I was a kid, we had power outages all the time. But that doesn't really happen very often anymore. And of course, power has now become very critical. So all the power companies, they, they have people on standby. So if something happens, they are very quickly out to fix the error. But I remember when I was a kid, the power could be out for hours. So you just, you got uh, the candle lights out and all right, now we have to do something that's not powered by electricity. And it was almost like a fun experience. But today yeah. I can't even break out the candle lights before like, oh, the power is back. And then of course the <laughs> fridge and everything starts beep, 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 beep all around the house and like, yeah. things powering on. It really would be nice if the power went out for a couple of hours from time to time just to, to, to get you can always fake it guys you know where the switches are <laughs> yeah but <laughs> that's not the same but uh, yeah. i don't want it but it would be good <laughs> for us i feel but i'm pretty sure i mean it is good that it's more stable than it was but i'm pretty sure that the next couple of weeks we're going to have a lot of unscheduled power outages because I mean, if you need to run anything for uh, more than a few hours, like a 3D printer, you can bet your ass there's going to be a power outage or something <laughs> fucking up the print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of the 3D printer, how is it out of the box yet? It's out of the box. Uh, I have made an account and I have calibrated it. That's how far I came. And then, of course... <laughs> It's time to do a test print, and uh, the first print that pops up uh, that's uh, included is that bloody boat. I don't want that boat to be the first <laughs> thing I print, but I've really been wrapping my head around it, what, what I want to print. But uh, now it's going to be a steering column bracket for the tractor, so it has a purpose. Oh, nice. So <laughs> tomorrow I'm going to take some measurements and uh, draw up the new bracket that's going to cover the hole I had to cut to, <laughs> to actually see what I was doing there. <laughs> nice. I was half expecting you to have regrets about buying the uh, printer and selling it on straight away. <laughs> that's just going to be another container story. <laughs> no, no, no this, just is a, mean. this is a keeper. <laughs> all, all, big, all big purchases from now on just get sent back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I still have that 30 days regret period, but I have taken it very much out of the box. So, yeah. I think it's a very cool thing to uh, to buy. I'm, I'm glad you've got one. Because hopefully that'll make things easier for when I get one one day. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a poor heart. Yeah, because yeah, so you two are really good at supporting me. <laughs> well, I've never used a 3D yeah. printer, so I can't help you. <laughs> We need to give somebody a shout out because we got a shout out this week. Yes, yeah. we did. We did yeah. a proper <laughs> shout out. A very, very proper shout out from James Fix It Fingers' latest video. Yeah, I thought that was a that was a nice video. I've never seen anybody making a simple box like that so entertaining for a starter. Yeah, yeah. So that that's requires some skill, doesn't it? Uh, but it was just nice. He was just, you know, giving shout outs and thanks to people along the route. And we were the last ones at the end. And I thought it was lovely. Yeah, apparently, we're uh, hanging out in the workshop with him. So I did, um, great work chamfering that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, James. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, James, do some proper, proper mitres on this box. <laughs> Is that really square? You should check it. <laughs> I mean, I can't really. I mean, I make boxes all the time, but it's like, yeah, making that into interesting video is. That's hard. Uh, that's an achievement. <laughs> the one thing I noticed about James's videos, I um, I got the notification when I was at work last Thursday that um, we got been, we've been given a shout out, and I couldn't stop and watch the video. But I listened to it, and James's videos are like listening to a podcast. I knew exactly what he was doing the whole way through. He <laughs> described it perfectly. <laughs> so I obviously did did the normal thing at the end and messaged him and said, "You should start a podcast." <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> yeah, 
there are a lot of Aussie makers, but I don't know of that many podcasts from that part of the world. Maybe just me who is uh, not informed enough. But I mean, the, it is nice to listen to to people from down under talking because they have that uh, nice ring to their uh, <laughs> to their language. Oh yes. So, so more, they they should start more podcasts, I think. But I mean, if if you can listen to the videos, um, of course, if you um, if you have like a full blown subscription to YouTube, then uh, you can actually uh, put the video on while going to bed, and then just turn the phone screen off, and then you can still listen to it. So then, uh, it's, it's very much a podcast you can listen to then. Yeah, I think you should just upload the MP3 track from the video, and just as a podcast, I don't think it needs to record anything separately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be great. <laughs> They could prefer if you just watch the videos over and over again, <laughs> especially while sleeping. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, this is a bit hard because, it, okay, it, it would have been nice to watch one of my own videos and just listen to them. But of course, since I made them, I'm, I, I, I remember what I did at that exact time. But I don't think my ramblings for anyone else is going to function <laughs> very much as a podcast. <laughs> We've done all right for 54 episodes so far. <laughs> <laughs> Workshop company, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. We, don't, we just need some nice background noise. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright free background, background noise. Yeah. Workshop ASMR. <laughs> so I didn't, didn't have a, a reason to bring up the WhatsApp group this week because nobody knew us joined. But I've noticed a common theme is when we record the podcast, the po- the uh, WhatsApp group goes crackers. It's like they know we're recording the podcast. So <laughs> quick, let's all chat before those three idiots get in there and chat back. <laughs> <laughs> ah, when the cat's away, the mice are dancing on the table. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I keep getting notifications come up. <laughs> yeah. I I'm just trying. see them. I, I don't have enough time to read them. No. I turn, I turn my phone off and... Uh... Yeah, so I don't get the. <laughs> I get the notifications, notifications through on the computer. Yeah, yeah that seems... I do as well, but yeah. I've turned the noise off, so I I don't really uh, see them unless I just have a look over at the icon there, and it says, "All right, something new has happened." <laughs> <laughs> it's eleven new messages. <laughs> but we just briefly touched upon it. I mean, Australia. I was under the impression that this year's Scrapwood build-off would be international because I think someone said that at a point, but I'm guessing international is just adding Australia now. What, what's up with that? <laughs> like Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's very clear that, you know, Tim's obviously got a man in Australia, Sam, from uh, Gumtree Hill Woodworks. I think I've said that right. Um, on the inside in Australia, running things from there. It's obviously he needs somebody in Scandinavia and Europe to run things for him there. Are, are you volunteering, guys? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what you what you I'm knew. not volunteering for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Hamar? Uh I think you'd enjoy it. I mean, it, it's it w- it was a fun video. I mean, next year if it does the same concept with other makers around the world, uh, it would be fun. Um, and, uh, yes, I mean, it's not much arranging, is it? I mean, it, it's just acting as a PO box for <laughs> getting stuff out to any potential winners. But we we understand that the winner is going to be in the UK anyway, building a a cupboard or a drawer or something. (laughs) (laughs) The very English English thing of a cupboard or a drawer. (laughs) A nice tea chest. (laughs) (laughs) That is a good idea, actually. Tea chests. I need to... uh, Yeah. I'm building... Well, 
I am building a box of sorts, but yeah, I should have a tea drawer. That would be cool. I have a drill holder with a, a small square, like a drawer that you pull out for your tea bags. That would be cool. Yeah. Mm. I think with sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a shame you're not a Makita guy, because Makita make a little uh, battery coffee maker, don't they? Yeah, yeah do. battery water, 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 blah, 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 water kettle as well. Yeah. I was thinking I, I, I could get an adapter for that and spray paint it, uh, put a Bosch logo on it. There you go. <laughs> you're, see, you're secretly buying Makita stuff and rebranding yeah. it as Bosch. <laughs> so that's what a 3D printer is for. <laughs> and then when you make that video, you send it to them as if they want to. Sponsorship. <laughs> that's a re I mean, that's a good video making a. That's the uh, negative of a Makita logo on one side and the Bosch logo on the other, so it fits on perfectly. Just <laughs> a tight fit over it. But you should do that. <laughs> yeah, have you got something interesting to talk about in the half point? I do. Maybe. Oh, I actually put it down on a list. Nice. nice. Yeah. I think we should exp explain somewhat to to people what a half pint is, because I mean, in a, each and every, uh, every other podcast, it feels like they they explain what the after show is, but people should really know what that is. And the half pint is more or less the after show for this. It might be longer than the main, no, not longer, but the same length that the main episode, but a little more laid back. But uh, we don't hide it behind a paywall or something like that. We hide it in the future instead. <laughs> in plain <laughs> so sight. you have to wait for it a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe if once we get some kind of patrons thingies or something, you get the the half pint just uh, the same day as the main episode or something like that. Who knows? But it won't it won't be hidden behind a paywall. At least not as long as I'm publi publishing it. <laughs> Does that mean you have to edit both the main episode and half point in one go? Crap. <laughs> I usually That's edit a, the main episode and this is good, upload, and then, uh, all right, and then I forget about it. And then, uh, uh, I, I uh, when is the half point? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that last week. I normally do it on the same night. I had to do it last week and I hate it. <laughs> hate picking it back up again a day or so later. Yeah, it's better to do it in one go, I feel. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, right. but uh, well, I might try that once. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. You do that. Uh, but now this is uh, all for now. Uh, check back uh, in us in a couple of days uh, for a half find. Until then, have a good one. Bye.